thanks for staying with us. The willingness to accept responsibility for our own is accountability. Every now and then we read the news of how stolen funds by corrupt government officials are being recovered either locally by our Economic and Financial Crimes Commission or back into our country from foreigners. The most recent is the UK signing an MOU to return the sum of £4.2 million. The former governor of Delta State, James Onane Fabori, looted. Now, there has been so much debate on who should keep the funds, the state or the federal government. So our question tonight is how accountable has the government been as regards financial management, be it looted, borrowed, or even self-generated funds? What will accountability look like for you as a Nigerian? Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 so I'm going to come to the ladies, <laughs> Uti and um, Tammy. I am sure when they bring up the subject of accountability, the first thing everybody will say is that we do not have accountability in this country. Right? That's the first thing everybody will say. But let me hear, Uti, your thoughts first. You know, the subject of accountability in governance, what would it mean for you as a Nigerian? Uti, are you there? Um, so, I mean, just first of all, just first of all, to set the scene, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. To set the scene, first of all, we have no accountability today in you, our current governance in Nigeria. I knew you were coming Just there. if for anybody that is wondering, I just need to say that, first of all. Now, what does accountability mean? For me, Accountability in governance means that our leaders finally realized that they were elected to serve, not elected to rule. So the fact that you are in an office, whether an elected office, an appointed office, you have the mindset of servant leadership. Because when you have that mindset, then you know that you're accountable to your people. There is, as our quote says, the lack of transparency breeds distrust. And we've always talked on this show about the trust issues that the Nigerian people currently have with the Nigerian government. And that has now snowballed into a distrust that every Nigerian has of every other Nigerian, which makes our situation practically untenable. Hmm. I find that when I was on the road today, and I know that, I mean, we're going to talk about this return loop, and I know that some Delta state is saying, return the, the money to us, it belongs to us. And then others are saying, you know, if we're going to return this money, let's have it go into infrastructure projects and roads and things like that. But I asked, I remember back in 2008, during the first tenure, I believe, of Governor Fashola, I remember being at a town hall meeting that he held to announce the launch of the um, Lagos Badagri Expressway project. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head. This is now 13 years and counting. I remember um, that he had said um, that the uh, what's it called now? So no, sorry, this would have been 2009, I believe it was early 2009. So yeah. So 12 years and counting. Now, I remember him talking about this project and how the, the road was going to be, you know, widened into, I think, this 10 lane with, you know, the rails and everything in the middle of it. I don't remember what timeline was given, but this is now 12 years on. And I drove down that road today. And it has taken so long that the bits of that road that were started 10 years ago, 11 years ago, are now degrading hmm. and the project has not yet been completed. Finished. So it says in my mind that by the time the project is completed, we will have to go back to the area that we started and we do them again. So who held accountable for the success of this project? Who is tracking it? Because this project has gone through the first um, four years of his office, the second four years of his office, 
Four years has of moved on. We are now on the third government. Four years and of this government. project is not very near me. Yeah. So who is being held accountable? Okay. Let me let me hear Tammy's initial thoughts because I also went online to research because I'm happy that you are taking it even beyond just money. And that, this is why the, the subject of accountability and governance, you know, that's the conversation. It's not really so much of finance, you know, even projects, right, that we say we want to do real projects, this project and all those projects. How much of it, you know, do we say, you know, what we publish it to say, first of all, even from the budgeting, you know, how much is it really worth, maybe if they quote a $2 billion project, maybe that project would have cost us a billion naira. Who is checking these things? You know, who, who makes sure that this, this, um, the government is held accountable or the ministers or whoever is in charge, the commissioners, they are held accountable for things like this? Nobody. But let me hear Tammy's initial thoughts on the subject of governance and accountability in governance. Tammy, can you hear me? Okay, Uwa, I can hardly hear you, but I think what I can make out of what you said is that my thoughts on the issue of accountability, I think I made that out. Yeah. Um, I mean, just like Uti says, I would all I also um would like to see much more accountability in government. I mean, we keep talking about this over and over again. You know, when we talk about accountability, it's easy to spot corruption, right, when there's accountability in the sense of it. So I think everybody knows that we need accountability in government. I think everybody knows that it's lacking. Um, I think oh, I think most people, I mean, if you if you walk into the street and ask an, an average Nigerian this question, I think they know that um, we need much more accountability, right? I'm just glad about organizations such as Budget that are, you know, they are acting as a watchdog, you know, organizations that are looking into, for example, government talks about its budget and a lot of us go to sleep and we hardly follow up. But then the organizations that go ahead and say, okay, you said you use social percentage for this but you haven't used it, you've done this right. So I'm just grateful that we have such organizations, you know, springing up, you know, the press serving as a watchdog as well, to be able to track these things. Because I know that the more facts we have, the more we can say. But just generally, you know, we, I think we know that um, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good at all. Let me read some things that I found when I was trying to research on how much so far the government has... Um, um, recovered. So, according to Lai Mohammed, the uh, Minister for Information, he says, looted funds that we've recovered so far, if they can project it on the screen so you can see, over 800 million, uh, billion rather. So, that's, um, he said the Nigerian government said it had recovered over 800 billion in looted funds. The government also said it, ha it has secured the conviction of over 1,400 persons. And this is according to the Minister for Information. And, um, Further, there's another, it says, um, there's another one that says the Nigerian government says it has recovered assets and funds totaling about $9.1 billion as part of the anti-corruption drive. Now, the recovered asset includes money with, withheld by past government officials, money kept in private accounts, money is diverted to uh, private pockets, money is in possession of government officials not disclosed after leaving um, government. A spokesman said that the funds were recovered during Pre um, President Muhammad Buhari's first year in office. And this is like his second tenure, you know, running on, uh, we're going towards the third year now, you know. So I'm just wondering, Uti, if you can hear me, because I hear your, the audio is a bit poor, but if you can hear me, right, when we recover this looted funds, what should accountability be like if you recover this kind of looted funds? You know, what, should, what would prove to me as a citizen in Nigeria or as an indigent that the government is transparent. How should they handle looted funds? So, um, I mean, there, like, like I said earlier, there are multiple thoughts around these looted funds. So in the current case, because the funds were looted um, by the then um, governor of Delta State, the question there is that, oh, the funds should be returned to um, to Delta State, and there have been some references made um, to, uh, to another state where the funds were returned to them when they were recovered. So the thought process says it should go back to Delta State. Now, I'm not even, I think that every single state in Nigeria has needs. You know, there are projects and infrastructure and all sorts of things that could be put in place 
every single part of Nigeria suffers from a lack of ed you know, educational facilities, healthcare facilities. So it doesn't matter whether the money is going back to the federal government, it doesn't matter whether the money is going back to the state government. Where accountability comes in for me is what the money is being used for. Mm -hmm. When these monies are, 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 are found, are tracked, where does that money go? Where does, what, who is tracking the use of this money? We talked um, about the institutions a couple of shows ago. And I said, you know, let's not talk about all the different institutions we have, EFCC, NFI, all the different ones that we have. Now, Nigeria is no stranger to creating bodies and institutions and task forces and all sorts of things. Who is tracking these funds? Because when people are fighting now that, oh, the funds belong to Delta State, somebody else said the funds belong to the poor of Delta State, the money will go back to Delta State. And then along the lines, somebody will get asked questions and he will faint on the panel. <laughs> so let's be clear that when these funds are provided, when these funds are returned, we have to have a roadmap for the funds. That's what accountability is. Hmm. You have funds, you have a plan, you have milestones, you have checks. Now, one thing that I know that Governor Fashola was good at doing was town halls every 100 days. I don't know if that is still done in Lagos State. I'm not aware. Um, and I don't know if that is something that is done in other states. But every 100 days, all stakeholders put into a hall with the governor to talk about his plans, to talk about his achievements for, for the last 100 days, mm. to talk about his plans for the next 100 days. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that it's perfect, but at least I get a sense of knowing where you're going. I get a sense of knowing what you have achieved. And the fact that you're going to come and sit, whether it's in front of me directly or via the press, to tell me what you've done adds at least some accountability. We're not going to get to 100% accountability or even 70% accountability overnight. Mm -hmm. But there must be transparency. There must at least even be, and what, what's the word I want to use now? Even if you're going to be, pretend to be accountable, there must at least be something. So all these people now that are shouting, give us the money, give us the money. Ask them for the money in a year's time. Mm -hmm. Whether it is the actual funds itself, or it is what they have done with the funds. Then the fainting begins. Then the snake swallowing the money begins. Then, you know, all the wonderful things that we have heard. So accountability is simple. If you had money in your account, you have a bank statement for every single dime that came out of the account. You know whether you withdrew it by cash, you know whether you swiped your card, you know if you swiped your card, you knew exactly where the card was swiped. How about the Nigerian government try that? If you want to, you know, you want to get the Nigerian people to start talking with you, to start listening to you and trusting you, how about you give us an inch? Hmm. And let's even start to see that you're willing to be held accountable. The fight and everybody is loud now when the money is here. Everybody's thinking the money's for us, the money's for us, the money's for us. If you go to Delta State and see how many projects have been commissioned. Abandoned. And from the day they were commissioned and the ribbon was cut, nothing else has been done. It is shocking how many you will find. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. I think it was, um, I was reading somewhere in the news today where um, they were saying that um, some of the projects, um, I think it was um, Aquabio applauding some of the projects that had been completed, you know, under the NDDC, you know, it's, it's just so interesting. I, you know, at least sometimes it looks like they just come and just give us more. Okay, just eat this one. So you keep, you keep, you keep quiet. But the completion of the NDDC building. Yeah, you know, commending the completion. Of, I'm, I'm wondering, is that supposed to be our problem? Is that the problem? <laughs> Go ahead. <It's laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm just pointing out that that's one project. Yeah. One, just one. No, but I, I'm saying that, the, the, that those kind of things that when you make statements like that, it, it tells me, oh, shut up now. At least we, we are doing something. But they don't understand that, you know, for, for where we are and the kind of resources that Nigerians have, you know, or that we, we are blessed with in this country, there are some things that you shouldn't even come and boast to say that this is what you have done, right? We should be, we should be seeing exactly. We should be seeing transformation. How is that like building Dubai. helping the people? How is yeah. the building helping the masses? Is yeah. there a school in there? Is there a hospital in there? Let me hear Temi. Temi has been quiet for a minute. <laughs> She's soaking it all up. I mean, <laughs> yes, I am. And like I said already, we know what the ideal should be. 
and we know what like we know what the ideal is everyone knows what the ideal is and we know what things are looking like now yes but one thing that comes to mind as we have this conversation is um i know that we fault the government for not doing so much in, when it comes to accountability but just i would like to just take a few steps back to just look at our own roles at as citizens because one thing that this conversation brought to my mind you know just looking i mentioned earlier that there are some organizations like budgets that yeah, they serve as watchdogs for the government and for just for institutions is how much questions we are asking and i mean not just asking privately but actually asking the government and i think that's a good reason why we're having this conversation right yeah because you know as citizens the freedom of information act actually helps us to allows us to ask for public document ask, allows us to ask questions ask the government questions we have rights to get information but you know many a time i find that there's a lot of conversation and nobody's actually asking those questions right nobody is really interested in how it goes because we just sort of we just sort of like giving up on on the government or on on the country or we are very interested in our own private affairs but i think one thing that this conversation is doing and it's doing for me as well as other nigerians who are listening in is just reminding us of the need to ask questions because now that you speak as Uti was speaking there's some thoughts that came to mind like okay so they said they would do this at so at so so point they said so 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 was recovered okay what has been done with it and i think that is at least that's a positive for me of having the conversation because at least we know that people ask questions then we can talk about whether or not government is but if we don't ask, ask questions we wouldn't get the facts and then we wouldn't have so much information absolutely so something happened last year right something happened last year um, I was doing a particular, I was doing a, a box pop for a particular organization and there was a, there's a particular ministry, I'm not going to mention the name of the ministry, right? There's a particular ministry that actually has a website and has on its website, it doesn't have so much details of what it is doing. Now, this part is actually for the government. And so when I got into this box pop and just asking questions and interviewing and all those things, I began to ask people, do you know what this ministry is for? Do you know what they do? You know what? I think at this point, I'm just going to mention the ministry, the Ministry of Women Affairs, right? So I was asking questions like, okay, what have they done? What projects have been implemented? This was sometime in 20, either beginning of 2020 or end of 2019. And I was talking to people on the street, like street of Lagos, just regular box up, you know? So, and then I found that a lot of people didn't actually know there didn't know projects. There was a lot of speculation. Then I visited the website. Actually, somewhere online, if you search for it, you see what I wrote about it. I found that there wasn't enough information even on the website. So even when we say accountability, right, in the government's defense, I'm just trying to look at both sides. The government might say, oh, we've done so, so, and so with it. I don't think the government should actually wait for citizens to come and ask, what have you done with it? And each person comes up with a list you know what did you do with so so and so money these things should be readily available the information should be readily available let's even assume that the funds or you know i want to believe that there are some funds that are being used for the right purposes if we don't have the information out there if it's not available when we easily surf the net when we search on your website then we really can't know so much of what you're doing Absolutely. so a recommendation i had for that particular ministry was that there needs to be more details of what the ministry was doing at the time. I haven't looked recently. Maybe they've updated this and they've worked on it. But there needs to be much more information. Because people wouldn't just... Not every citizen will come and ask you. Absolutely. But at least there should be some measure of information you've provided online that is, you know, that is there. So that I when people you. say that, ask questions, you, you don't go like, oh, we have done this, but, but the information is not available. It should be available. It should be accessible to everyone. So, I mean, in the government's defense, if it has done anything, if it has, you know, measured up and it has been accountable, then it should be out there, it should be accessible. The public should have access to this information. If we don't have access and we have to go into rooms and files and ask questions and go from one office to another, then I, I don't think that that works. That, that's not okay. well. And on our part also, I think we should also be, you know, more open to finding information. That's one thing that this conversation is bringing. Yeah, the, the truth is we've had serious communication problems in this country. So but we're going to take a break. Uti, let, let's take a break. When we return, people are calling the WhatsApp number. That's not where you take a call. We'll open our phone line so you can call in. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 